Hello there, friends and enemies. Back in 2017, when I heard that there was a open world One Piece game coming out, I got very excited. Cut to 2019 and One Piece World Seeker came out, and cut to 2023, and I finally was able to get the game. Upon starting up the game, I was incredibly excited to see what an open world One Piece game would look like, and it was not exactly what I was expecting. Welcome to Rage Quit, a series where I talk about games that I have voluntarily stopped playing just to sort of give you an idea of what could happen to you if you buy these games. Don't take this as a review, I don't want this to be seen as a review, I can't review a game that I haven't finished, this is more so just a cautionary tale. These are things that happened to me in my experience of the game, and they could possibly happen to you. Not all the time, but it is a possibility. So let's talk about my issues with One Piece World Seeker. One Piece World Seeker is a game that has a story that is completely original just for the game. The game takes place on Prison Island, which is uh, an island that is occupied by Navy control. Starting off, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting from a One Piece open world game, but I was willing to give it a shot. In all honesty, I found the island itself to be somewhat bland. There are some good parts of the island that feel really inhabited because there are a ton of NPCs kind of all over the place, but for the most part, the island feels somewhat empty overall, even with the pirates and the navy occupation that are everywhere, littering the entire map. The game just kind of feels empty, There's doesn't feel like there's a whole lot to do here. There do seem to be side quests aplenty, but most of the side quests that I was able to play in the game were entirely fetch quests, and these fetch quests were all very much the same as each other. A few of them were different and exciting and fun, but overall I felt a growing mounting disappointment over the fact that these fetch quests were just kind of go to a different part of the island, grab something, and then come back here. That isn't to say that these are the only types of side quests, but these were the side quests that I was mostly running into, and it became very disheartening very quickly. Combat in World Seeker is pretty simplistic, a little bit clunky, and not that great if we're being honest. Combat starts off very simplistic, and over time you slowly gain skills to do more of Luffy's signature moves. However, my biggest issue with combat came from the disparity between observation hockey and armament hockey. Observation hockey is quicker and allows you to dodge a little bit more, but the payoff to this is that you deal less damage and you take more damage from enemy attacks. With armament hockey, you can deal a lot more damage and you take a lot less damage, however, you are slow and very clunky, you can't dodge and you can only block. In my opinion and experience, it seems to me like there is no point in using observation hockey for most fights. Yeah, you can dodge, but if you can just hit harder, there's no real reason to dodge. This also feels like a real deviation from the way that I understand hockey works in the One Piece universe, especially given the way that Luffy fights in the series. It seems really disjointed from the actual way that he utilizes his hockey. I would like to forgive this combat, however there are points in time in the game that I've played so far at least, where the combat just kind of starts to feel really bland, really, really, really repetitive. It doesn't feel good after a certain point in time. Last but not least, my biggest issue with One Piece World Seeker was the lag, the dropping frame rates, and just the overall slowness that I started to get uh, partway through the game. For once I had acquired all eight members of the crew that are in-game, I started seeing really incredibly bad lag and load times from really bad optimization, it seems like. It got so bad to the point where the simple act of turning Luffy around would take multiple tens of seconds. I feel like it's important to note at this point in time that when I installed One Piece World Seeker, it automatically set all of its resolution and graphic settings to the lowest settings that they can be in the game. I spent some time attempting to look for an optimization mod to help better optimize the game just a little bit, and I found out that apparently one Piece World Seeker seems to be an unmoddable game. Um, apparently there are no mods for One Piece World Seeker that exist. 
Overall, the main things that really ruined my game experience were the issue of the lag and frame rate dropping, and the issue of having so many boring, repetitive fetch quests as side quests. I feel really bad for not wanting to continue to give it a chance, but I kind of don't want to deal with the game anymore. It seems on the surface like we have the buildings of a pretty fun game, however I just cannot bring myself to play it. If you are planning on buying One Piece World Seeker, just keep in mind that these are issues that you may come in contact with. The bland world and bland combat aren't just my opinion, I have seen other people echo this as well, even before I bought the game, and I wanted to play to form my own opinion, only to come to the same opinion. <laughs> I have seen a few people talk about the lag, but it doesn't seem to be an overly prevailing problem, so you might not have to deal with that. If you do, though, it becomes very quickly apparent that at that point in time, the game becomes unplayable. And that is it for Rage Quit's One Piece World Seeker. Have you played One Piece World Seeker? And if you have, have you encountered these issues? How do you feel about the game? Let me know down below. This has been your cautionary tale. I hope you found something to enjoy about this video. And until next time, as always, drink your water. <laughs>